Hi, Jeff here at Mr. Hardwater. This video is a summary of our standard hopper system. Now, this system is really intended to be a business in a box uh, for pool tile cleaning professionals who wish to get into wet blasting. And it's also designed for other professionals, such as uh, stone professionals that want to do stone cleaning, marine professionals that want to do the boat holes, and other applications such as construction and landscaping, where you need to use the wet blasting process. So, overall, this standard hopper is a business in a box designed to add income to the professional when you're doing that type of work. So in particular, this video is going to be a summary of the setup and testing of your system when you first pull it out of the box. So for example, today what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a system and we're going to pull it right out of the box. We're going to take a look at the components that are in the system. We're going to go through them one by one. And then as we go through them, we're going to set up the standard hopper and eventually we're going to get to a point to where we can test this system. Now what we're going to do here is we're testing it in our shop and this is what you should do um, either at home or at your business. You should test it in your backyard or in your shop or in your garage and what we're going to do here is we're going to test it using some uh, industrial sand here. It's 30 grit and the 30 grit is going to best approximate a lot of the medias that we're going to use professionally. So for example, if you're doing pool tile cleaning, a lot of the media such as the Maxstrip PT2 has a mesh rating between 20 and 40. If you split that difference, that's about 30. Um, if you're using PF2, it's between 40 and 60 and that's a little lighter than this. And finally, if you're using so sodium bicarbonates or salts, the mesh size on those are about 60. So what we're going to do here is we're going to simulate the system and test it, set it up, and we're going to use the more heavier um, media for that because if we can get the system working well, get a feeling for how the heavier medias are going to work, then the lighter medias are going to be pretty straightforward because they're a lot uh, lighter and uh, it's easier to move the media from the hopper and through the hose and to the blast head. Because remember, um, on all hopper systems, you do experience some uh, friction of the media when it's going through the hose. So that's going to going to slow down uh, some of the flow and remember it's the Venturi system that has to work against that friction. Another factor to consider too is when you do have the hopper you've got a lot of media in there and there's some resistance for the media to flow through the hopper before it gets to the tube. So remember that the Venturi has to fight both of those forces to move the material smoothly um, through the hopper and through the hose and the heavier the media gets the more difficult it is to move. And so for the standard hopper, we're going to go through and simulate that. And in future videos, what we're going to do is show you some of the upgrades, and we're going to show you some additional hoppers, such as the carbureted hoppers, that really help to drive that media uh, from the hopper and through the hose by pushing forced air through it. And it really helps with the heavier medias, and it also helps you to drive the media a longer distance. So let's get started then. This is a uh, we're going to pull our standard hopper right out of the box and let's take a look and see what kind of components we have. And I'll do that now. So here's our box. First thing you note is that we have an extra piece of hose here. This is a 20 foot clear vinyl piece of hose. Uh, this system comes with two pieces of hose. That's the first one. Here's the tile that we're going to shoot eventually. We're going to practice with this. We'll set this over to the side. And we're going to lean our box back right here, and we're going to pull the system out like this. There you go. So we'll set the box off to the side, and now we can take a look at this system. And let me put it up on a box to hold it up so we can see what we got. And these are pretty lightweight. They don't weigh too much when they're unloaded. So let's take a look at this. So here we go. Uh, here's our system right here. Now the first thing we want to take a look at is the size, the weight. You know, it's pretty maneuverable. Let's take a look at this lid. The lid here is uh, a snug fitting lid. It's got two notches on the side. And what we do here is put those notches uh, across the frame and that keeps it in place. And so the lid is designed to be used during storage, you know, keeps the media dry, etc. Um, so you can do that. 
Uh, one thing about the lid though, is you can upgrade uh, this hopper to a different lid. And that lid would be our twist lid here. The twist lid works pretty straightforward because it's basically got a collar. If I can get it apart. So it's two pieces, got a collar. The collar slips over the ring here and it comes with some screws. And what you can do is just screw the collar onto it and then you can twist you know, this lid onto it. This lid is vented also, so you can put, uh, so the air is going to flow through this lid even though the lid is closed. So that's one of the upgrades for this system. And we will put this together and set this off to the side. And going back to our hopper now, let's take a look inside to see what comes with this system. The first thing we see here is we have an additional media stake. Now the uh, standard hopper system is designed to run in both hopper mode as well as in a bucket mode. So the way that this would work is you would take your hose here, the extra hose, and you could put it onto here and put this into a bucket like this. Just put this into a bucket and then attach this up to your, uh, uh, your gun and then you'd be able to operate the system that way. So this system here will give you the flexibility to work in either bucket mode or hopper mode. Now we have two pieces of hose on this system and here's this one here. The reason we have two pieces of clear vinyl hose, the other one's down here attached to the bottom, we do that because uh, oftentimes this hose gets wet you know, during operation and it's a lot easier just to put a new piece of hose on and just to keep going and then dry it out later. So just to, for convenience, um, we added two pieces of hose here so you can keep those jobs moving and going forward. Another thing to note too about the hose is that the hose length is 20 feet. And as I mentioned before, there is some friction associated with the media flowing through the hose. So with the standard uh, hopper in a blast head, the uh, suction pressure is really only enough to move the media about 20 feet because of that additional friction. So that's the reason for the length of the 20 feet. Now in the carbureted hopper systems, those come with 50 feet, and you can actually run those systems at 100 feet if you want, depending upon how much air you're going to supply into the line. So we'll set this hose off to the side here. And we'll take a look at a couple other items here. Um, obviously we have our documentation. Um, it includes our manual, so I suggest reading through the manual. There's a lot of technical details uh, regarding the uh, mesh sizes of media, the different types of media, the hardnesses of surfaces. Uh, hardness of surface is measured in terms of Morse scale, M-O-H-R scale, and so um, if you think through this process and understand how the physics of it all is working, it'll really help you to make your jobs more efficient and, um, and it'll help you to come up the learning curve uh, faster for these machines. So we'll set this off to the side also. And then finally you'll see a bag here. These are some parts. Now these parts are going to go on to the blast head itself. And I will set these off to the side and when we get to the gun, then we'll break these out and we'll go through them one by one to show you exactly what's in it. But for now, why don't we set the hopper up onto the bench so we can get a better look at the undercarriage of it. And um, So here we go, let's set this up here, like this. There you go. We can get it stable. I'll pull this hose out. Here's the extra 20 feet of hose. There you go. Now, uh, so basically this is our system set up now. And what I'm going to do now is to start, uh, you know, taking the things apart and, um, and show you exactly what's going on. So let's adjust our camera to, to, to go in a little bit. There you go. That's good. And, uh, second
Okay, so uh, now that we've got, so now that we have the hopper up on the bench, now what we can do now is start to uh, take it apart and we can take a look at some of the features that are included with it. So the first thing I'm going to do now is I'm going to grab some uh, wire cutters here because we do have some plastic ties that keep everything together. So the first thing I'm going to do is go over to this side and we'll undo this plastic tie here. And what we're going to do is pull out this stake. And this is a poker. It's what we call our drain snake. And this is a very useful item for dislodging any kind of debris that ends up into the bottom of the hopper and in the valve. So what you can do is you can always run the, this into the hole there. And if you can see that, you can see that the poker is actually going all the way through the uh, media valve. So this is a nice feature here that you can use. And there's three ring bolts that hold it into place and it sets into the hopper frame like that. So that's a nice feature. The other thing to note here too on the uh, frame is we have another wire uh, plastic clip here that contains the hopper feet. Now what these are, these are the uh, these are the feet that thread into the bottom uh, part of the frame of the hopper. So if you can see I'll lift this up and what you can do is you can thread these on like so. And this will give you a little bit more traction when you're working around slippery surfaces like that. So all that does is that just slides onto here, gives you a little more traction and, uh, and it avoids scuffing up the customer's uh, um, you know, decking or other things like that. Now one of the uh, upgrades that you can do on this system is you can add some uh, casters to it. So you can replace these these guys here. You can replace these clips here with the caster. And the caster's got uh, a locking mechanism on it, so obviously you can lock it in place if you want. So the caster is going to thread on to the hopper in the same way, basically just like this. And then you could uh, have a whole hopper system on wheels like this. Now one of the advantages of doing that is that um, as you fill up these hoppers with media they're going to get pretty heavy so in some cases it's kind of nice to have the extra casters on the front and that'll kind of distribute the weight and you can roll it around a little bit easier. So that's a potential for you as well. So now what we can do now is uh, take a look at the gun itself. We've got a couple clips here so let's cut those off. There we go. And here's the uh, main part of the operation, I'd say. And this uh, system here comes with our 15 degree blast head. And it's got the hose. And the hose is connected to the bottom of the uh, hopper here. And um, when we hook this up to a pressure washer, then the water comes streaming out of here, it creates the vacuum suction, and it pulls the media you know, through the hopper and through the hose, and we're good to go. Now on the cart, you'll notice that you got a couple rings here. You got a ring on the left and right side, and you got a couple hooks here, and that's just designed to hold these things into place. You know, while you're not using them, just like that. Now you'll notice that uh, there's an additional ring here, and that's because this hopper is designed to work with uh, two different types of guns. Because as you've probably seen in other videos, we have two different types of nozzle tips. Uh, for these hoppers. One is 15 degree wide and the other is zero. So in some cases you might want to use two different guns and in that case you could put um, the guns like this. So that's an upgrade if you want it, an additional gun if you're going to need it. Um, so we'll set this off to the side. And now finally we can take a look at our uh, three-quarter inch um, valve, media valve. And this is really going to control how much media is going to be flowing from the hopper and through the hose. So if we turn it like that, obviously it's in the off mode. If we turn it down like this in line, then it's going to be in open mode. And I put a little tag on here because when I run these systems, in my opinion, it's best to run these fully open. And if you want to control the media, which you will, and slow it down if you 
if you want to. What you're going to do is control it on the uh, blast head side as opposed to the uh, media side. So I like to run this fully open and control the media flow this way, okay? So we've got that here. And that's basically our system here. And then here we've got a clean out. This will twist off like this, this cap. And then we have, a, uh, we have an open uh, area here where we can kind of poke something in there and clean it out or flush it out, etc. So let's put this cap back on. And now, what we need to do now is take a look at some of the extra parts that come along with the, uh, the blast head. So what we have here, a ladies out, is first of all, we have, we have an extra fan tip. So see this tip here? This is the fan tip that goes on to the gun. So a lot of times, you know, when you're working, you might bang the tile or bang it onto something, and you can chip these pretty easily. And uh, they're made of uh, pretty strong steel, so you don't really break them that often. But if they do chip or crack, it'll affect the spray pattern. And in that case, what we do is we just supply an extra one. So if that ever happens, you can unscrew this set screw on the top and the bottom here, and you can just put in a new uh, fan tip and you're raring to go. So we include an additional fan tip. And we also include, um, you know, a couple different set screws. You know, the little screws on the top and bottom because, uh, you know, occasionally those fall off or you're going to lose them or whatever. So it's easier just to have a couple extra ones in case you need it. So keep those in a safe place. Also, what, what you also get in that um, for the fan tips is you get a bottle brush. And that's very useful for cleaning these systems out. Like if you wanted to clean out this... Uh, media input right here. What you can do is jam this bottle brush in there and clean it out this way and clean it out that way. And then finally what it's got is a blue uh, nozzle cleaner and here's a piece of wire. It's basically similar to a paper clip. If you don't have one of these use a paper clip. You could take this off here and you can just jam this thing right down into the um, to the orifice of the nozzle tip inside here and if you ever get any uh, debris that's clogging that up, you can easily dislodge it this way. So we try to add all these little things to these systems um, to make them maintainable and operational when you're in the field. Because eventually you're going to need all this stuff to clean them out as you go. So we got that. And then um, also what we have is we have a wrench. See this wrench here? If you were to take this off, which we'll do in other videos, you can actually unscrew that nozzle tip that's in here. This is a 9 16 inch wrench, and these are pretty, uh, we have them tight in there so they don't leak. So if you ever do try to take these out, you're probably going to have to put it on in a vise. Put this wrench on here and put like a breaker bar, and really kind of crank that thing free. But we do give you the, the uh, wrench to take it, you know, to unscrew it or screw it in, etc. So you can modify it if you wish. So there's a wrench. And then finally, what we do put in here is we have a, uh, a two inch nipple like this, threaded two inch nipple, quarter inch. And what you can do is you can shorten up this whole gun. So instead of going from 28 inches or 30 inches from handle to the head, what you can do is take this guy here, put it here, put it here like this, and then put your handle here and make the whole thing really short. And that's kind of a nice uh, option if you want to get up close to something or if you want to lean around the pool, you can uh, just take this uh, thing out and put a really small uh, lance in there. And that's a great option for you if you want to do that. So those are the parts that are included um, with the gun. So now we've got that squared away. We'll slide all these parts away off to the side here. And then returning back to this media valve. Now the media valve is really important. As I mentioned before, you want to keep it open. But we have a very important upgrade to these systems if you want to, uh, um, if you want to make these things run smoother. Because a lot of times, just due to the physics of these, of these uh, uh, systems, what happens is the media pulls, is pulled by the, vent uh, the Venturi suction head here, and it pulls about a, a foot of media at a time. And then he gets an air gap, more media air gap. So they're always chugging along. So you get a little bit of an intermittent flow of media. It kind of flows out, 
air, etc. And um, it's just the nature of the physics of these devices. So what you can do if you want to smooth that out and if you want to drive these, these systems further, if you want to work further away from your hopper, one thing you can do is you can upgrade you can upgrade to our um, Venturi uh, carburetor. We call it a Venturi assisted carburetor and it comes in this pretty big, uh, not big, but pretty strong case. And you'll see that it's got a hose. We'll show this in other videos, but it's got a hose. And then it's got all the components here, you know, for to turn this ordinary three-quarter inch media valve into a carbureted system. And what we would do in that case is basically just put this thing right here and hook it up to our uh, air compressor using a regulator. So this is a good uh, upgrade if you ever need it, but it's available. It, it's available. It's united. So let's set this off to the side now. And, and then the couple other things that you may need in the future, it's not included with the kit, but you can get it as an upgrade, is you can get the uh, inline pressure gauge. Now this is what you're going to add to the pressure washer to know exactly what kind of pressure is coming out of that pressure washer. And then finally, the only other thing you could really do with these systems is add a manifold, and that would enable you to run two different guns simultaneously. You can alternate them back and forth, um, etc. But if you do run two simultaneously, all, obviously it's going to split the pressure in half, and you'll be working at half pressure on each gun. So generally on these systems, really what you're doing is alternating between two different guns. So overall, this is our system here. And I think the next step of our video now is we're going to set it down to the ground and we're going to add some sand to it and we're going to start testing this uh, system and get it working.